Hello, everyone. Dr. Kevin Zadai with you. Welcome to our live broadcast this evening. I'm so excited that all my students, all my partners can join me for this and everyone else that's all over the world logging in. I just felt like the Lord wanted me to share a couple of things with you this evening and uh, I'm going to get right into it. But, but the Lord has still been dealing with me about what he showed me in May at the beginning of May about the five and a half hour visitation that he had showing me some of the things that are right now pending and also some of the things that are to come. And I know that you have lots of questions. So I sent out a question. Uh, I sent out a questionnaire, sort of speak, uh, to all my students so that they would be able to ask the questions that they would like me to talk about. And I have quite a list here and I want to answer those and I'll do that uh, in just a couple minutes, but I wanted to preempt this by the fact that the Lord is still dealing with me about what's going to happen in September and October and November and December. And of course, it's always a good time to pray. It's always a good time to fast if the Lord leads you to. And it's always a good time to seek God in, 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 this, um, in this day and age that we live in. But However, this portion, I felt so important, this portion of time right now that we, we live in, the anointing of God was so strong on me after I had this visitation that I felt as though uh, the Lord was telling me to, to get in contact with Sid Roth and to talk to him about this and see if we can get this out, which we have. We, if you haven't um, watched that show, the 23-minute one that is the normal syndicated show. And then there's also another 42-minute show that was recorded after that, which actually fills in a lot of the gaps. And so if you haven't seen that, you need to watch that. But I want to address some of the things right now that the anointing of God is, is so strong on me. And He has been dealing with me in a very strong way that we have actually been able to push a lot of the things that were pending back, but push them back. The darkness has been pushed back. And right now, I feel, I feel as though the Lord is releasing us to even go further than we've already gone. He said that we have pushed back a lot of things that will not happen now. And I am so excited about that. I'm relieved because I do not want any kind of hardship to come upon this earth. I, I don't want any of God's people to in any way encounter anything bad. And we have prayed, we have seen God move in a mighty way. Uh, if you've noticed that Attorney General Barr has come to the forefront in the news, and this is this is what Jesus told me. He said that we need to pray for him, and we we have been praying for him. And it is a, it's a good news what has happened. He's come, come out with a lot of indictments, that, that are pending and it, one he's announced just recently. And this is just part of all of you praying and asking God to move by his spirit that righteousness and justice would come to this, to this earth and that his kingdom would reign. And so all of you praying has really helped uh, this to, to come to the surface. But there's, there's more prayer needed in this area. And I feel like the Lord had told me this morning he said, we have pushed back a lot of what was going to happen. And so he wanted me to go live. So I asked the students to, to, to put in their questions for me. And I really appreciate all you students and uh, all you partners, everybody that is helping us here, because I need everyone, all the body of Christ to rise up to the occasion and bind and loose right now and be in agreement for, for what is, is happening on the earth right now. It's a very exciting time because I saw that in the spring, it's just going to be so bright that the Lord uh, is going to have his way with his people and that righteousness and justice will come. And this, this, is, why, this is why Jesus appeared to me was is that he wanted us to agree and push back this darkness and this injustice and this uh, unrighteousness that is popping up. It's, it's worse than I have seen in a long time. And the, when the Lord warned me about it, he said that he was done with lukewarmness. He was very stern. 
and it, this went on for hours in the night seasons. And when I went to bed, I had no idea that I was going to be taken and shown all these things about the next 11 years and how we are going to see things overturned and righteousness is going to come back in. And that's why he wanted me to start the school. That's why he wants um, me to start Warrior Church. And, and then all the other programs that he spoke to me about, we're in the process right now of implementing these, these projects. There, there are now almost, uh, I think there's almost nine projects. If you count everything, we, some of the ones we've announced, and then there's, there's several that are secret that we're still not releasing yet. But, but Jesus wants us all to walk in the power and walk in the Father's glory right now. And he said he was done with lukewarmness. And so the first question I want to talk about with you all, and this, th just remember, we are going to stop this all this evil by prayer, and then we're going to stop it by going to the polls and voting. We're going to believe that the polls will be open and that God will protect us and that, that the administration will provide law enforcement at the polls to keep everything safe. So remember what I said that the Lord told me. He said, he said vote in heaven and then vote on the earth. And so on Sid Roth, I talked about that. I talked about how we need to put our foot down spiritually and then we need to go to the polls and vote. Okay, so the first question I want to get to is, is uh, concerning Paul. And the Apostle Paul wrote in Ephesians and in Corinthians some of the verses that Jesus went over with me. In fact, he sat with me and went verse by verse through Ephesians. He didn't uh, cover all of Ephesians with me and he didn't cover all of Corinthians with me, but he did deal with me all the verses concerning the church. And so the, the first question that one of the students asked was, what did Jesus teach you from the book of Ephesians and Corinthians regarding the church? And this was profound. Uh, he took me to Ephesians and he started in the first chapter and he started to talk to me about how God's love, that the plan that him and his father had for the body of Christ, for the people on the earth, was is that people would, would come to know the Lord and that they would be born again by the Spirit. That this was to restore man back spiritually so that they could encounter a fellowship, a, a relationship with God the Father again. So the born-again experience was not just to pluck people out of hell, because that does happen when, when we get born again, right? We get born again, we confess the Lord, we say Jesus is Lord, we are born again, and then the old things have passed away, and behold, all things become new. And he went over this with me. But he said, I didn't just come to the earth, walk on the earth, and then suffer and die, go to the belly of the earth and suffer down there, and then come up and go and be seated with the Father. He said, I didn't do all of that just so that people would be plucked out of hell. He said, there was more. There was more to the work that he did. And it said, he said it was because he wanted to do the Father's will and the Father's heart, which was to have fellowship with man again. And this is the thing that's missing. So he went into great detail about this, about how the churches have become lukewarm because the people have not been taught. They have not been taught correctly. They have not been taught about the crucified life. They have not been taught about the resurrection life. They've not been taught about denying the flesh. And, and allowing the spirit of life to put to death the misdeeds of the body. And, and, there, and he just went on about communion. And he said, Kevin, I'm done with lukewarmness. And he said, the fivefold ministry of the church needs to build the body up, encourage them, and get them to the place where they become a mature adult off of milk and on to meat. That's what he said to me. So he, he talked about how his father had this intention from the beginning. And so in chapter one, he talked about how the Lord, the Lord has established this foundation, this truth, and then he created the earth, then he created man and put man on the earth. But this, this love that he had, he expressed it 
in creation, but then he, he expressed it when the man fell. When man fell, he came down in the body of Jesus Christ, and he did all that he did for us and bought us back. And Jesus said, I didn't suffer and die just so that people won't go to hell. He said, I restored man back to the Father. And he said, now, he said, we're supposed to be having fellowship, communion together. And so he chose us as his very own. And he went over all this with me. He said, we chose a man as our very own. And we joined, we joined ourselves together in communion with them from the beginning. And when this restoration happened through Jesus Christ, it was just a fulfillment of what he had desired from the beginning. And so you can understand that his plan is always perfect. So he, he had already predestined those who would believe in Jesus to be adopted back in. And this is what, this is what he went over with me. And he said that he adopted everyone back and he gave them all the rights and privileges that they had beforehand. So this was done According to Paul in verse 4, it was done before he laid the foundation of the universe, that he was joining himself to us before the foundations of the world. Because it does say that in the book of Revelation that the lamb, the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world, this, this was God's plan. Okay, so Jesus is sitting there. He had taken me to a, a certain spot that I know of that, that is part of our ministry. He took me there in my sleep and he sat with me and he started to explain this verse to me. And he said that he had made it so that we would be holy and innocent in his eyes. He had already planned on doing that. This was because it, it was preemptively done. He told Jesus that this is what we're going to do. And it's going to be complete. So when I was in heaven, I saw all this. My, your father wants you to have everything that, that he has. We are co-heirs with Jesus. We are heirs of God. This is what the scripture says. Okay, so he said his plan was perfect. So it says, for it was always God's perfect plan to adopt us as his delightful children through our union with Jesus, the anointed one, so that his tremendous love that cascades over us would glorify his grace. For the same love he has for his beloved one, Jesus, he has for us. And this unfolding plan brings him great pleasure. And I just read verses five and six. And so he just continues on. He, Jesus went on with me. He says, now that we are joined with him, he says, now we have the, these treasures that were given to us through the redemption that was by the blood. So the blood of Jesus is the one that, that he, he used this word that, it was, that everything was canceled against us. I mean, it was total cancellation. So he just, he said, it's completely wiped out. There's nothing, there's no accusing voice against us. And, and this was so encouraging when he gave me this word by word uh, commentary. And as he talked what Paul said, that all of the theology that's there, he was unfolding God's plan. He was showing me the pure plan that they had from the beginning. And it said, it, it, he told me it was because the Father's great pleasure was to bring us back and that he had never planned, you know, even though he knew, he had never created us that we would fall. He created us perfect, and he wants us back. And so Jesus did this amazing thing. So Jesus just kept going on. He said, now we're joined with Christ, and we've been given this treasure. And then he says this. In verse 9, he says, and through the revelation of the anointed one, he unveiled his secret desires, the hidden mystery of his long-range plan. So Jesus said, this was the unfolding when he came back. He was opening up the plan of God. And then when he left and went up into heaven, the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost. And then this wonderful spirit, the Holy Spirit, is giving us revelation of the word of God. So we have understanding. Our eyes are open. And so he said there was this abundant grace that was given to us and that the Holy Spirit was revealing it. And so he used the Apostle Paul. So the Apostle Paul 
was shown all these wonderful things that were hidden in Christ. And this was a, a wisdom that's not from this earth. Paul said this wisdom was from the other realm. And even he told the Corinthians, and Jesus mentioned this to me, he said, um, when, when Paul came to the Corinthians, he said, I didn't come to you with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration and power of the Holy Spirit. So it was by the power and the demonstration of the Holy Spirit that Paul would come and speak. This is the plan. So this was a long-range plan, but it's just been, been, been revealed in the last 2,000 years. But see, man has been in existence. If you look at all the genealogies, we're looking at almost 6,000 years now since Adam. And this, this process that we've gone through is revealing different things about God through His Word. So God's unfailing purpose, His detailed plan is going to reign supreme. That's what Jesus said. And this is in verse 10. He said, through every period of time that we've gone through, all the fulfillment of all the law and the prophets and everything that happened up until Jesus came and then even after Jesus came, it's a long-range fulfillment. Finally, And finally, it's going to reach a climax. And this is what he told me. He said, he's going to make all things new in heaven and the earth, they're all going to be made new. But he said this, this time of the end is not yet. And this is, this is what he spent a long time with me. He said, Kevin, th that uh, a lot of people think that the end is coming, that this is the end of everything. But see, all this is is an exposure of the evil that has been underlined, has been hiding behind the scenes all along. And so Jesus is just allowing the, this, this uh, country to be cleansed of all the injustice and all the unrighteousness, all the wickedness that is, is in the leadership right now is going to be exposed. And Jesus is going to use the church to do this. He's going to use his body to do this because we're going to obey God and we're going to pray, we're going to believe, and we're going to bind and we're going to loose. We're going to lay to the root and acts of righteousness. So it'll be like a weapon that we just lay at the root of evil in this country. And he said it's going to be exposed because he said that the holy fire from the church, from the body of Christ, from, from people just demanding righteousness, demanding justice in, in this world, the Christians are going to see holy fire start to bring out the snakes. And that is exactly what's been happening. You see, evil cannot work during the day. It works during the, the dark. And so when light exposes it, then it cannot work. And that is why the church must stand up. And so Jesus was, was telling me this, and he said, we're, we're not at the end yet. He said, there's going to be a glorious outpouring of the Spirit. He said, it was already slated to happen, and Satan has come against it because of the, of the light and the uh, fire uh, from the altar that has come upon the earth and, and all the angelic presence. We are seeing these snakes. We're seeing these, these evil, th uh, evil things popping up, and people are manifesting those evil spirits, even as we speak. So the, the system that is in set, that's been set in place for the Antichrist is already ready there, but it's just becoming more real right now because of the heat. So this was going to have to happen anyway. As soon as we started getting hotter and the, the Spirit of God started moving, evil was going to expose itself. So this was going to have to happen anyway. So that's why Jesus said, I'm done with lukewarmness. And so... Continue it on. He said, he said this. He said that our union with Christ means that we have claimed our inheritance that was given to us. So being, being yielded to God, being adopted by God, this, this means that we've claimed our inheritance that we are adopted in. So this is where, this is where it kind of turns from, uh, from what people's thinking previously was. He showed me all this was all correction for five hours, but he said this. He said, people are just waiting for the end to come. He said, but it's not going to come until the gospel is preached all over the world 
and then the end's going to come. He said there's a huge harvest to come in. And so God is getting ready to do that. And so he said that we need to claim our inheritance. And that inheritance is the power of the Spirit of God to walk as the sons and daughters of God on the earth. And that inheritance is for this realm as well as that realm. It comes from the other realm, but we have to implement it into this realm. So you can understand that Jesus say, no, no, this is not the end. This is, this is a cleansing of our land. And this is an exposure of the evil that was already there. The harvest has to come in yet. So he starts to, to tell me that there's a plan and a purpose that, that has to happen. The Gentiles, the times of the Gentiles, he said, that it has to finish, that you, we have to provoke the Jew to jealousy. And that has not happened yet. So he's saying that we are going to excel now, that the Lord is going to start to move on behalf of his church, of the body, and the body is going to be strengthened, that the fivefold ministry of the church is going to rise up. So, so he said that we have received the spirit of God, and we should not back off of that. And so he said we should pray from the fire. We should prophesy from the fire. We should always pray and speak from the fire. Always. We should have that cleansing fire, cleansing our thoughts, cleansing our mind, cleansing our emotions. They should always cause us to be very detailed in the mysteries of God. So the, the Spirit of God is so willing. And even as I'm speaking this, I'm reliving what it was like to be with Jesus for that time because he was, he was very, very commanding when he talked. In fact, um, I never said a word in those five and a half hours. I continually sat there and let him teach me. So he continues on and, and he did this at the end. He's talking about the, the seal of the Spirit. So in verse 14, after he talks about the seal of the, of the Spirit that we've been stamped in verse 13, he goes on and he says, he's given us an engagement ring. He's like, he's, he's pledged himself to us. And he, he's, he said, you're the bride. He said the, the fivefold ministry of the church should be building up the bride and bringing them into maturity so that we, we can uh, walk on this earth and display the glory of the Father. That's what he told me. He says, so the end hasn't come yet. But this engagement ring is like an installment of what's going to come in the afterlife, in the eternal life. But he said, we're not to focus just on that right now. We are to focus on maturity. So he went into this amazing thing. So the first thing he did was he, he went through the prayer that Paul prayed in verse 17 through 21. And actually, it goes the whole way to 23 to the end of the chapter. But this is what he said. He said, okay, for the believer, with, you know, we got the fivefold ministry of the church, which ministers to the body. Okay, but the believer themselves has to be in a position where they receive enlightenment of the Spirit of God. So they have to receive the Spirit of God to the point where their eyes and their ears are open and they have discernment and they have understanding. So it's all about understanding. So you have to receive from the Father, but you receive it through Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit. So the, all the Trinity is here working. Now get this, because this is exactly what your Father in Heaven wants you to know. He wants you to know that the, the Spirit of God is very willing to open your eyes and open your ears. But it's not your physical ears, it's not just your physical eyes. It is your spiritual eyes. Did you know that you have spiritual eyes and spiritual ears? And so you're supposed to be building yourself up, okay? So you pray in the Holy Spirit. That means you yield to the Spirit and let the Spirit of God, according to Romans chapter 8, verse 26, it says that in your weakness, you don't know what you should pray or how you should pray, but the Spirit of God comes in and takes hold of you in your weakness and lifts you up and super intercedes in you and helps you to pray the very will of God. This is what we're supposed to be doing. This is in Jude chapter, chapter 1, verse 20. It says, building yourself up in the most holy of faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, and staying in the love of God. This is what we're to be doing. We're supposed to be meditating on the Word. We're supposed to be praying the Word. We're supposed to be acknowledging the Word and being accountable to the Word. 
we are to be connected to the vine. And Jesus went through chapter 15 with me as well of John. He went through those verses as well about being connected. And maybe we'll get into that in a little bit. But here, here's what he said. He said that I pray that the light of God would illuminate with the immeasurable, immeasurable greatness of God's power made available to you through faith. So God has so much light, so much brightness, it's immeasurable. And he wants that immense power and that immense light to flood you. And so Paul prayed that the eyes of your heart would be filled with light or just be bombarded with light, just explosion of light, that you would know the mighty power, that you would know the, the hope to which you've been called, the glorious inheritance in the saints. And so Paul prayed this. He prayed that we would know the hope to which we've been called. We would know the glorious inheritance of the saints that Jesus Christ had provided for us and that we would know the mighty power also that was in Christ who raised him from the dead and now is in us and has released us, has released us from dead works, from the dead. You know, we've been resurrected and Jesus went through this. The body of Christ should be the most powerful organization the po most powerful thing on the earth right now, the po most powerful institution, the church of the living God should be the most powerful institution on the earth. Now, he told me that. And he told me that his, him and his father and the Holy Spirit are all working to glorify the father. Right now, the father is, is going to be glorified through the church. And this is why you need to yield to these verses. So there's a, there's a wealth of information that is in the Spirit, and the Spirit of God and the Word of God agree. So you can read the Word and have the Holy Spirit washing over you like He's doing right now, and you can know the, the glorious hope to which you've been called. So now that, that Jesus was raised from the dead and we are raised with Him, and we've experienced that power, then we can be seated with Him in the heavenly realms. And He goes into this in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. He, he's been exalted to a throne, but it says that we are seated with him. And, and this is a tremendous truth that's, that's not really spoken like it should be. And so Jesus said, don't back off this message. Continue even in a greater way. The Father wants everyone to know that he has provided a place for them to sit with the Son of God on a throne, as it says in Revelation. He told the churches, though he told the seven churches, those who overcome and are victorious, they will sit with me on a throne. And so God has provided that throne through Jesus Christ. We can sit with him. And the Father desires for you to be there with him. And we are seated with him. So he is the one who is the leader, the head of the church, Jesus is and we are his body. So Jesus continued with this and it went on through, but I just wanna, for, for time's sake, I wanna get into what he said. He said, after, after we have built ourselves up and we have allowed ourselves to be fed the word of God and, and go into meat and instead of milk and be mature individuals, this is some of the things he discussed with me. Then he said in chapter three, in verse 3, it says, For this wonderful mystery, which I briefly described, was given to me by divine revelation. Okay, so Paul received his gospel. The gospel was received through a revelation. So Paul knew the Bible, but see, they only had the Old Testament at the time. But Paul received his message through revelation. So he met Jesus Christ personally not just in the flesh, but in the spirit. After he died, Jesus appeared to him and taught him. And he speaks of this and refers to this. This is very important because, see, Jesus wants you to know the same truth that he gave Paul. So Paul wrote these letters. It's very important that you meditate on these. For this wonderful mystery, which I have briefly described, was given to me by divine revelation. In verse 4, he said, so that whenever you read it, read it, you will be able to understand my revelation and insight into the secret mystery of the Messiah. So Jesus began to unfold himself to me through Paul. And that revelation was just flowing. But yet Jesus was right there with me in this, in this time that he visited me. 
He said this in verse 5, he said, There has never been a generation that has been given the detailed understanding of this glorious and divine mystery until now. He kept it secret until this generation. God is revealing it only now to his sacred apostles and prophets by the Holy Spirit. And this, this was a secret that's been revealed. And this corresponds with what Paul said in Corinthians, which Jesus referred to with me. In 1 Corinthians 2, it talks about that, that we can have the mysteries of God revealed to us because the Spirit reveals the deep mysteries. He searches out the deep mysteries. So the Spirit wants to take you into the deep things of God. And then he says this, Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, he talks about, in the first 10 verses, he talks about the fact that no eye has seen nor ear has heard what God has for, for those who love him. But then he says this, but he has revealed it to us by his Spirit. So you can see where the, 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 the church and the fivefold ministry of the church, they have to emphasize the fact that it has been provided for us and it's no longer hidden. It can be available to every believer. And so the Spirit of God right now is so willing to open up Ephesians to you, just like Jesus was using this time to open it up to me. And I've, I've listened to these things and read these things for so many times. I've read this, these passages, listened to them on recordings over and over again. But yet, when Jesus laid it out to me about his passion, he, him and his father had this passion that this would all come forward now in this end day and that we would walk in it, that we would start to have revelation and we would have this experiential knowledge, not just knowledge like Paul had before he was saved, but when he was saved, he had experiential knowledge. In other words, Jesus visited him. The Spirit of God visited him. He had encounters and you can have those encounters too. You can read the Word of God and pray in the Spirit, and you can have those encounters. So this is what Jesus went over, and the, the, the many, many students, uh, uh, all you students out there, a lot of you ask this question, so that's why I'm spending so much time with it, because Jesus went through this verse by verse. And he's, his passion was that we would be given this divine mystery, and we would have understanding about it. And so it was, it was no longer hidden. That's my point. So the fivefold ministry of the church is supposed to start stepping in now and start teaching this. And this is what was intended from the beginning. But because of lukewarmness, because of misunderstanding the fivefold ministry, misunderstanding people or misunderstanding their call, and they're not receiving revelation, they're just speaking out of their mind. And Jesus even told me, he said, my prophets are speaking out of their imagination. He said they're, they're prophesying out of imagination instead of by the Spirit. So the purpose was to unveil this whole thing and that, that the heavenly realm would be revealed to man. So we're supposed to not just be just walking on this earth in the flesh, we're supposed to be walking in the Spirit and seeing into the Spirit and becoming adults spiritually. We're supposed to be becoming mature. And this just went on and on and on. And Jesus, you know, he did not back off at all. So this, this was about, about at the two-hour mark where he started to, to, to say that you've got, you've got uh, the blood of Jesus working. You've got the Spirit of God working. You've got the Word of God working. And you need to be accountable and you need to tell people they need to be accountable to the word of God, to the spirit of God, to each other and start building each other up. And it's, it's amazing that we've been empowered to discover these truths. And he, this is in verse 18 and 19. He said, we have these experiences with the Holy One and we are allowing God to reveal his love to us in all these different dimensions. It's, it's amazing. There's so much more. I'm just telling you this. There's so much more to God. And, and it, was just, it was just revealed to me how, how much I don't know during this experience as our Father was just pouring out this truth through Jesus in this, in this nighttime vision. And it, it, was, it, was a, it was beyond words. I couldn't even 
respond to any of it. I just listened and listened to it. But we are discovering these things and we are starting to encounter his endless love. And this, this transcends all understanding. There's no way that you're ever going to come fully understand the love of God. But this is the love, the extravagant love that he pours out on us. So don't ever doubt that God is working in your life. Don't ever doubt that he he in any way uh, loves, he loves you because he does love you. Don't ever doubt his love. He loves you and that power of his love energizes you. It causes you to be able to go beyond what you could normally do. You've got to accept his love right now. And this is God's purpose for this whole encounter that I had was that Jesus said this. He said, me and my father, we love people. We're not doing any of these terrible things to people because we want everyone to come in. He said that if people judge themselves, they won't be judged because the Lord Jesus Christ took upon himself the judgment for all mankind. And this is, this is the gospel. This is what he told me. So this is where he inserted that in. He said, me and my father are not doing these terrible things. He said, we want the, the, the harvest to come in. We want everyone to come to heaven with us, but people won't. And that's what Jesus did uh, when he was on the earth. He tried to compel people to come to him and, and put their faith in him as the Messiah. And the Father sent him. And so Jesus went around doing good and healing everyone that was oppressed of the devil. And that one night he went out over on the, on the hill there, at the, I believe it was the Mount of Olives, where he, where he looked down in Jerusalem and he said, Oh, Jerusalem, how I've longed to gather you as a, a uh, mother hen gathers her chicks. But he said, You would not have it. He said, You did not discern your day of visitation. And this is what's happening right now. But see, it shouldn't be happening in the church. The fivefold ministry of ministers should be building up the body and educating the body. And we need to get back to the basic message of the gospel. And this is all really good news. And so Jesus then said, okay, now that, that everyone has done this part and all the believers understand this chapter 1 through chapter 3, and so you can go over these chapters on your own and go over them word by word, verse by verse. And, you know, I'm sure there'll be uh, material coming forth on this in the, in the coming days um, uh, as, as the Lord leads. But he then got into what I would call the fivefold ministry of the church. And this in chapter four was amazing. This this left me. Um, I'm still not over everything that he told me. But but Paul said this, that we have have one body. We have one spirit and we are called into the same glorious hope of divine destiny. So he starts to talk about the body and he and he get, it gets into this idea that that when Jesus ascended on high, he took his many captured ones with him and, and gifts were given to men and. This was in verse uh, 7 and 8. Then, then after that, in verse 11, he said, Now, Kevin, he said, once I ascended on high, he said, then I distributed. He said, I distributed all these gifts. He said, so that I can empower each individual to fulfill the body. So he said, I am the head. And my plan was, and my father's plan was, that everyone would be in unity and be built up and that we would be the body of Christ on the earth, and we would walk in power and in demonstration of that power with miracles and signs and wonders. So, so in verse 11, he said this, he appointed some with, to be apostles, and he said, God the Father sets these. He said, God sets in the church some to be apostles and prophets and, and, and evangelists and pastors and teachers. And he said their calling is to nurture and prepare all the holy believers to do their own works of ministry. So that this is what's interesting is, is that Jesus focused on the fact that the fivefold is supposed to build the body up so that they could go and do the works of the ministry. And this is the way it was put to me. So we're thinking, you know, like this, the fivefold ministry of the church, you know, those are the ones that have the power and the miracles and, you know, that we, we look at them as being ministers. But see, Jesus didn't speak that way. He said that the fivefold was chosen to build up the body, but we, the, the body and the individual believers were the ministers. It says, holy believers are being prepared by the fivefold. 
so that they can do the works of the ministry. And as they do this, they will enlarge and build up the body of Christ. So the, the grace ministries that function, or the, or the fivefold, is, is to enable the body to function as ministers in the marketplace. And Jesus said that we are supposed to be in the marketplace, that the Lord wanted us to be there so that he could prosper us in every way so that people would see that our God was the only true God, that he was going to prosper us, just like in the Old Covenant, where the nations around Israel, they saw that God was with them. And, and God said, he said, I will be with you and you'll be the head and not the tail. You'll be above and not, be, not beneath. You'll, you'll, you'll lend to many nations, but you'll never borrow from anyone. He said, he said in Deuteronomy 15, 4, uh, he, said, he said, I, the Lord of God, I'm going to eliminate uh, poverty. He said, there shall be no poor among you because I, the Lord your God, have blessed you and have promised you and will take you into the land. So that's what God does for believers. He wants us to be in the marketplace to be witnesses and to, and to have an encounter with God and so that other people see that and they know that God is with you. That is the whole plan that Jesus showed me. So this abundance of revelation causes the believer to function on the earth as, as, as a son of the living God. And that it's revealed that all creation is groaning right now for the, the sons of God to be revealed. But it's supposed to be revealed in the marketplace. You're supposed to prosper. You're supposed to be wiser than, than those around you. As a believer, you should be sought after. And, and the, the, the church of the living God needs to stand up and fulfill its calling. And this is, this is what the fivefold was supposed to do. Build us up, teach us, empower us, prophesy over us, um, cause us to walk in the things of God. So we would come into one perfect man with the full dimensions of spiritual maturity and fully developed in the abundance of Christ, in the abundance of Christ. And that is all in this Chapter, chapter 4, verse 13 of Ephesians. Okay, so then, then the Lord just went on with me and he said that we need to go deeper, we need to get hotter, and we need to allow the anointed head, Jesus Christ, he is the head of the body. We need to let him fulfill his part. The body was formed in his image and we are in his image. And he said that these gifts operate and build us up. And so after that, he, he took me to Corinthians 2 as well. And then he showed me the gifts of the Spirit in, in chapter 12. And he went through all those with me. And he, and he showed me how we're supposed to build ourselves up in the Holy Ghost. And then we're supposed to allow those gifts to minister to others and build up the body of Christ. And he said, if we do that, then, then we're going to be powerhouses everywhere we go. We're going to have answers. We're going to be able to help people. We're going to have more than enough so we can help others and not just ourselves. So this is where he, he, uh, he went into this uh, area with me about how we are to be imitators. We're actually supposed to be imitators of God. This is in chapter 5 of, of Ephesians. He said we're supposed to, to love our Father in heaven, but we're just like little children. We imitate our Father. We just want to be like Him. It says, Be ye imitators of God in everything you do, for then you will represent your Father as His beloved sons and daughters. Okay, so you, you, that means in the marketplace. I mean, that means that we're going to be like God to people. We are not God, but we will be like our Heavenly Father. And so we need to start to see prayer fruit. We need to encounter Him and encounter His love. And then we need to be able to, to surrender ourselves to where the Spirit of God can minister through us. So the, there's an, it says here in um, verse 1 at the end, uh, it says that we are His beloved sons and daughters. And then in verse 2 it says, And continue to walk surrendered to the extravagant love of Christ. For He... He surrendered his life as a sacrifice for us. His great love for us was pleasing to God, like an aroma of adoration, a sweet healing fragrance. And so this is what we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be this healing 
uh, in this sweet aroma of our Father, and we're supposed to live in this. And this was God's plan. So anyway, he, he went through this whole thing with me, and at the end, he showed me, he said, now, there is this cleansing happening right now, and he said, but we must pass our test. So he encouraged me to teach this everywhere I go and to encourage everybody to com- continue with your, your, your uh, walk with him to where you become mature adults, not needing anything because the Spirit of God has been able to groom you. And then I saw at the end, um, he showed me that we have a, a time left, a lot of t- actually a lot of time. And I know that some people, they just want to get out of here. But I got to tell you the truth. I'm telling you, this is not the end. The Lord is just getting started. And we are going to see a, a mighty upheaval in, in this nation of the United States. And we're going to see uh, a cleansing happen. And once that is, is, is exposed, Attorney General Barr will, will, will seek those indictments and get them. And if we pray, we can, do, we can, con, ten, we can continue to push back the darkness so that we don't suffer for all of this, this evil that is, that is underlying, hidden in this country, in our leadership. It's going to be exposed. And, and uh, God, God himself is working through his body right now. But we need to stand up. Okay, so, so that's what he talked to me about regarding the church. That the church is, is actually just getting uh, ready to be the example on the earth of who God is. And so all of us need to readjust and, and really realize that we're going to be here for a while. And we are going to witness and we are going to prosper in the workplace. There's going to be a great turnaround in this country. And I want to make that clear that we don't have to go through this. We don't have to go through any of this. Jesus said that the God of this world is doing this, that he is not doing this. He said, if you judge yourself according to the word of God and you pray and you bind and you loose according to what Jesus taught us, the body of Christ can push this evil back so that the, the, the country can turn in the right direction. And there'll be all kinds of things happening. So I actually repent for this country. I repent for all my leaders. I ask the Lord to expose evil. I, I I get right to the point with, because I refuse. I refuse to let this country go to Satan. I'm not going to let it happen. This is, God, this is God's plan that America would come forth through this, tested and tried. But it's not just this country. It's the believers in this country. It has come to that just like it did in Sodom and Gomorrah. God was... A, was a, concerned about Lot, and so Lot was delivered, and his family was delivered from that, and they were taken out of the city before it was judged, and that is exactly what's going to happen with us. We, we are going to be protected. Jesus said that there was this, this idea of the word Goshen, which is, is the area in Egypt that the Israelites lived during their captivity. So when they were working as slaves for 400 years, over 400 years, they, they lived in a place called Goshen. And if you notice, none of the plagues, none of those bad things that were happening in Egypt happened in Goshen. And Jesus told me that Egypt is a type of the world and that Goshen is a, is a type of the kingdom and the secret place. And God is there with us in Goshen. So Project Goshen, he said, is in effect right now. In other words, we have this place called the secret place of the Most High God that if we will make that our dwelling place and we, we, we live there, he said none of these things will happen to us. None of these diseases, none of these evil things will happen to us. You'll see them happen, but they will not come near you. This is the Word of God. This is where we need to buckle up and say, listen, I believe the word of God. I'm not going to look at my circumstances. I am not going to back off. I'm not going to compromise. And, and this, this, this is how Jesus presented the gospel to me was through these letters. And so thank you, students, for asking that question. I know that it took a lot of time for me to answer that question, but I, that it was the biggest part. It was the biggest part of what he visited me with. 
and, and then he, um, he said that if we don't pray, he said, now this was in May, so he said we have uh, just a, a few months, and then he said when it gets at the end of August, he said, and goes into September, he said that these things will start to pile up again if we don't pray, and that we will, we will find ourselves back in this tailspin again in the fall. And, and um, that, didn't, that was not good news to me. But the, the good news was is that Jesus said, but if you pray and use your binding and your loosing power and you stand up against this and you vote in heaven and you vote at the polls, he said that you can push this stuff back and you can actually prevent it from happening. So, so the, another student asked me, uh, how should we pray over the next three months to push back the plans of the enemy? And the, the, the translation of of what Jesus said. See, the Father was speaking through Jesus, and he said, whatever you bind on the earth is bound in heaven. And he said, whatever you loose on the earth is loosed in heaven. But see, there is another translation that says, whatever you permit on the earth is permitted in heaven. And Jesus even said, when you go to a town, he said, if you forgive their sins, they're forgiven. Well, what, what, what does that mean? You know, do we have the power to forgive sins? Well, Jesus said we did. And Paul said this. He said, we have a ministry of reconciliation in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. He said, we have a ministry of reconciliation. He said, we go out and we announce that people's sins are forgiven and that the price has been paid if they will acknowledge Jesus Christ as the way. If they say Jesus is Lord, and they believe in the heart that what they say with their mouth, he said, they're going to be saved. Okay, so it's the same thing right now with what we're going through. We need to permit things and we need to forbid things. So whatever we forbid on the earth is going to be forbidden in heaven is what one translation of what Jesus said. So we have this binding and loosing power. Jesus said that when you're gathered together and you, you uh, agree on as touching anything, it'll be done for you. He said, two or more in my name and I'll be in the midst of them. So Jesus is right there wanting to fulfill all this for us. Isn't this amazing? And so the gospel will be preached throughout the world. But see, it's really being preached through our lives because God is working with us. So in the next three months, how you pray is this. You you know, this is the prayer that I prayed with uh, Sid Roth on his show at the end of the show. And essentially, he, Jesus said, just forbid this evil to work. Forbid these people who are full of evil spirits. They're, they're operating under evil spirits. Uh, they're very high, uh, powerful rulers of the darkness of this world. And they are infiltrating leadership. So you need to lay at the, at the root with an axe, a spiritual axe, and just cut them off and just say, I forbid those evil spirits from operating through our leadership. And, and you cut off the life flow. So they're not, they're not going to be uh, uh, empowered anymore. I saw that they were puppets. So, so if you take the, 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 the power away from them, if you take their source of rebellion and you, you bind it, then they can't operate. They'll, they'll be powerless. Now, I know this. I saw this, and I know, I know that it's a big step for some of you, but you've got to start to see that the enemy has to back off, that he has no power when you use the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus. So your Father in heaven wants you to plead the blood, wants you to use the name of Jesus. He wants you to forbid things. He wants you to forbid Satan from working. He wants you to forbid him. Just say, I forbid you. You can't talk. You can't work. In Jesus' name. And you just be forceful. And you, you do it all the time. If the whole body of Christ would do this, you would start to see results. And that's what we're seeing. We're seeing daily now the results of these prayers. We're seeing them. Just in the last few weeks, things have already turned around. Things have been exposed. And I'm seeing things clear up so that in September, when September comes, I already saw that we have, we have already cleared out most of September just by our prayers. And if we continue on with it, we can clear out October as well. And what I mean by that is Satan has plans too. And he has all these things that he wants to bring forth. And he, if he can find men and women on the earth and empower them to do his evil, if he can get them in rebellion and witchcraft and, 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 and to kill, steal, and destroy, then 
those spirits will be able to act out through human flesh. If we forbid those evil spirits from doing that, they cannot affect a person. And even if a person is the, the vilest and the meanest, and, and uh, it doesn't seem like there's any hope for them, you watch how many people get saved. You watch that these people have a Paul the Apostle experience where they get saved. I'm telling you the truth. This is because you bind those evil spirits and they're not allowed to work. Okay, so that's how you pray. You pray for the next three months. You pray for mercy. You pray that the Lord would give a spirit of wisdom and revelation to people. But then you lay at the root all against those, at that evil and you cut it off. And this is what the Lord taught me to do. He said, just, just cut them off and I, every day. I mean, and I, 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 I name individuals. You know, all the people you could think of that are being used to the devil to destroy this country. He said, you just you just lay at the at the root of that evil that's working through them and you forbid it. You just say, no, you cannot operate. And you'll you'll watch these people will become weaker and weaker because they don't have their source of evil uh, in, 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 in behind them working. And, uh, and this is what the body of Christ must do. So that's how you pray for the next three months. You pray uh, for the body of Christ, that they would get out of lukewarmness. You pray that, that the body would be built up. You encourage people to pray in the Spirit, to walk in love, and to do something for others. So the, the Lord said if, they, if the body starts ministering to each other and giving of themselves to each other, He said, he is going to come in and answer their prayers. He's going to lead people in supernatural ways. But he said that people need to start ministering to each other. And then he said what, you can pray for the fivefold ministers of the church because um, they need to stand up and speak to the body and prophesy to the body and build them up and get them to the place where they're walking as mature adults. So that's how you pray for those. So you pray for individuals, you help individuals, you pray for the fivefold, and, and we will see this thing turn around. I'm, I'm already seeing it, and that's why I've come to you today with this broadcast, because I've seen a pushback now where I've seen the darkness being pushed back into October, and so September is clearing up. And so let's just keep going, let's keep doing this. Let's stand up and not be lukewarm. Let's encourage people to, to partake of the coals from the fire that, that are in the throne room, right there where Isaiah had that coal taken from the altar and placed on his lips. We need to ask God to do that. We need to ask God to, to anoint our lips and touch our lips with those holy coals so that we can prophesy. We can prophesy from the fire. We can be cleansed. We, we need to have our lips cleansed. We need to speak only where we're going. There's a destiny for all of us. We need to speak that. So we need to push back the enemy, and that's how we do it. Okay, that was a good question. Um, next question is, what is the most important thing on Jesus' heart right now? And what he told me was, number one, is that he said him and his father are being slandered. And he said, I want you to defend us by telling people the gospel, telling them the good news and telling them that the God of this world is, is the one who's doing all this evil. Jesus went around doing good, healing everyone that was oppressed of the devil in Acts 10, 38. But it's, it says that the devil goes, he's the thief. He's, this, he's the one that kills still and destroys. But Jesus comes to, to give us life and life more abundantly. So that's in John 10, 10. So what is on Jesus' heart is, number one, is that we speak our Father in heaven's words and that we represent Him on the earth. We will fulfill not only the ministry of Jesus, but the greater works of Jesus as well. Okay, so that's very important. Number two is on Jesus' heart right now is the lost, is that the harvest would come in. But we need harvesters. So we need people that are going to go out and we need mature seed. We need people that are mature to do this. So Jesus... On his heart, he said, I want people to go into the marketplace to their work. I want them to prosper. I want them to have businesses to start. The Lord's going to start new businesses for you. He's going to give you ideas. He said, go back out there and let me prosper you. And he said, you can be a witness and you can help people. He said, I want to do it in the marketplace. So he wants the lost. So that's the other thing that's on his heart. So remember that 
Him and his father are being slandered, so he wants us to defend him by telling people the truth. And then also he wants us to prosper in the marketplace and he wants us to go out and be witnesses because he wants the lost to come in. Him and the Father want everyone to come in. No one to be lost. That is what their heart is. Okay, um, the next question. What does the church need to do to be victorious in this season? And um, this, this is, uh, there's many things, but what Jesus said was, was just reject lukewarmness and take a coal from the altar of fire. And Im just immerse yourself in heavenly fire, heavenly cleansing fire be baptized in fire that's what he said to me you know he's baptized in fire and he baptizes people in fire and in this season to be victorious you have to yield to the fire you have to yield to the joy it's inside of you so you just tell you just announce it i'm yielding to the fire um, i'm yielding my tongue to the fire I'm, I'm yielding my members to the holy fire i'm being empowered to walk in the spirit not in the flesh it says that you cannot please God if you walk in the flesh. But if you fulfill the desires of the Spirit, you please God. And that, that, is, that is what we do in this season. We, we, we continually cancel the devil's plans. Continually. So that is what we're supposed to do in this season. Okay, next question. Um, a student asks, how should a Christian prepare and be ready to help people? Well, what you do is... You, you ask the Spirit of God to get you ready to be instant, in season and out of season so that when the Spirit of God wants to use you, that you're ready. So you ask the Holy Spirit to put you through school. And all you students out there, you're, you're taking the courses that we're offering. This is all to prepare you. This is the Father's heart for you is just to be prepared to be a minister and, and to lead a Bible study and to start a church. And that's why we're doing Warrior Church. We're getting people ready so that we're going to have thousands and thousands of churches all over the world. And it's going to be people like you who are going to be empowered and are going to want to help people. So you help people by getting in a place where God can use you. And then what you do is you ask God to prosper you so that you can have extra to help other people. So you, you get extra stuff. You know, when you go out to the grocery store, you, you get a, a, an extra food, you get extra everything, and then you, you pray about what, um, what you're supposed to do with it. And then you give it to somebody. You give it to your neighbor. You give it to someone who um, is a, a single mom or dad, uh, people that are having financial trouble. There's lots of people right now that could use extra uh, extra money or extra food or, or help with their rent. And, and that's what we're doing here at Warrior Notes. So, so this is how you get ready is you pray in the spirit, but then you, you let the spirit of God put you through school to where you get ready. And you can, you can, uh, you know, if you, if you don't have the money to go to school, then what you do is you just, you, um, you open your Bible and you pray in the spirit and you meditate on the word of God and you let the Holy Spirit begin to train you. But we offer courses that'll just accelerate that. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing is because we believe that it, we are in a place of acceleration right now. And so you can do this from the privacy of your own home or on your device. And so you're getting ready to help people by being willing, praying that the Holy Spirit trains you and then asking God to prosper you so that you have extra so you can help people with food and water and blankets and rent money whatever it is that God puts on your heart, you can set apart a portion to help others. And so that's what we're going to be doing with Warrior Church as well. We're going to be um, doing the Bible studies and, and then we're going to um, set it up so that the, the people, that the, whatever students are leading this, that, that the people would bring their, some provisions and then you would start to pray like how you could help people out, help mothers and help uh, single moms and single dads that, that need help, uh, widows, um, a, a, orphans, anything. You just go and you help people. You help children. And, and this, is, this is God's plan for you. Okay, um, how do we reach souls in this uh, climate of fear and panic? Well, what you do is, is you have a peace about you. So you got to have encountered the Lord Jesus Christ in that strong way. And once you do, then there's a peace about you. See, you need to tell them the truth. You need to tell them that the devil is doing this and that there's evil spirits that are causing all this stuff to happen. You know, this is not God's plan. And then you show them that God is a good God and that the devil is a bad devil. And then that's how you get people. 
out of this tailspin. But see, you need to have the goods yourself. You need to be able to pray and lay hands on people. You need to be able to prophesy over people. You need to have uh, whatever you can give to people if they, if they need food. Whatever it is, you just love on people and you tell them this is, this is not God doing this to us. This is Satan, okay? So then, then um, what did Jesus, this is the next question, what did Jesus tell me in my visitation about the fivefold? And I know that I went through that already, but the, the fivefold, he said, is supposed to minister to the body. And he said that the, the fivefold will rise up in this end day and fulfill their purpose. But he said, we need to focus on building people up and not tearing them down. We need to get away from this, this uh, prophesying judgment because Jesus, when, when um, the, the cities rejected him and the disciples, the disciples said, should we just call down fire on them? And um, Jesus said, you have no idea what spirit you're of. He, he rebuked them for doing that. And they were evil. They rejected Jesus. They rejected the disciples. But he said, that's the wrong spirit. And so the fivefold, the thing that he talked to me about the most with the fivefold was, is first of all, they need to preach the gospel and not focus on, on current events and end time events. They need to focus on good news of the gospel and build people up and, and, and build the body up. That's what he told me to do. And he said that, that, that the fivefold would then uh, fulfill its purpose and then the body would fulfill its purpose. So there, it's, it's twofold. It's the fivefold ministry of the church and it's the believer. He said it's all one, but that he said that the works that are, that are the greater works are going to be done by believers. He said it's going to be by the body and that the fivefold is, is like the, the, the government or the administration of God. And, he, and he, he set that in the church so we would all be built up. And, you know, I'm, I'm glad to be a part of the fivefold. But he said that they right now are not focusing on the right things and they need to get back to the message. And he said that get people to a place where they judge themselves by the word of God so that they do not encounter the judgment that is in the world. See, and that's what happened at Goshen in the Old Testament. They were protected, remember, when I, we talked about that. So that is what Jesus told me about the fivefold. And, and he went through all those verses with me as well. Okay, um, how should countries outside the U.S. prepare and pray? Okay, so each, each country, Jesus showed me that each country is, is on a, in a path of of either destruction or restoration according to how they are responding to the Word of God but see if they don't have the Word of God they can't respond to the Word of God so we need to have messengers sent but then once the Word of God is preached then if if the people don't judge themselves then they're gonna be judged so he said for instance he said I'm not judging I'm not judging believers because they're supposed to judge themselves. He said, so he said, it's not as though I'm just judging a nation because within that nation, there are people that have judged themselves. So he said, I can't just judge a nation. And then um, all the people that are judging themselves and are believers, they, they don't, they shouldn't get judged with the world. So he's not doing this. This is like a, a false idea. He said there are believers and there's unbelievers. There's Jews and there's Gentiles. There's, there's uh, wheat and there's tares. Uh, there's the, the, the goats and the lambs. And there's the virgins that are wise and there's the five virgins that, that are unwise. And he said if, the, if, if people would judge themselves, they would not be judged. So he is telling me that other countries are on this path of either they've rejected God or they, they have not heard. And so Jesus asked me to ask him for the nations as my inheritance and that I could have these nations, but see, we'd have to get back into a restoration mode. So that's where we have to prophesy to the nations and tell them of the good news of the gospel and tell them their destiny if they'll turn. Just like with Nineveh and Jonah, Jonah prophesied to turn and repent and then they did and then Nineveh was saved. And so that is where every other nation is. There, there's, there's a different um, path that God chooses for, 
for each nation according to if they have already heard the word of God and rejected it or if they haven't heard yet and they need someone to come. And so each nation should prepare for, for uh, this coming, these coming months with, within the nation, the believers should pray on behalf of others. So there's this, this idea of intercession. And so I saw that other nations, that the believers inside of those countries will pray either that the word of God is sent to them or if they have heard the word of God and they've rejected it, that, that you would pray and intercede that, that God would have mercy. So you have to go into this intercessory role and this interse intercessory prayer um, mode. So every nation at the sound of my voice right now, all over the world, you as believers that are watching, you can, you can change your whole nation through prayer. And you can start it by just asking God to have mercy on your nation and then to send messengers. And if the messengers have already been sent and if they reject it, they've rejected it, then you need to pray and intercede just like Abraham did for Lot in, in Sodom and Gomorrah. Either way, you can see history made by, by your prayers. I, I, I know this to be the fact. I, when I was in heaven, I saw this. And then during this, this time with Jesus, where he showed me the next 11 years, he showed me a total turnaround. He showed me that there were people in every nation and that because of those righteous people, he's not going to destroy a nation. That's what, that's what I know. And so this nation is not going to be destroyed. We are going to see a cleansing, but we're going to see things turn around because of repentance. And so the goodness of God, Paul said in Romans, leads people to repentance. So it's not the fear of hell. It's the goodness of God being revealed that causes people to repent. And we're going to see this nation turn. And we're going to see a lot of, of things overturned that were evil. We're going to see a lot of things revealed in these coming months. Okay, so the, the next question is, how can we... Have, be effective in intercession for our nation. So I've kind of already touched on this, but the idea of intercession is, is when you stand in the gap for, for someone or a country. So you have to allow the Spirit to do this, but they, the, the Spirit of God will give you a burden and you will actually feel like I've actually been praying for people and I felt like I was lost. I was interceding for people that were not saved. And I actually started to feel like I wasn't saved. But of course, you know, I am saved. But I, when I started interceding for people, I would actually feel pain in certain parts of my body that was wrong with the, the person I was praying for. So I would start to feel and take on the burden of that person or that nation or whatever it was I was praying for. So intercession means that you stand in the gap, that you take upon yourself um, that what they won't do themselves. So like I pray that their eyes of their heart would be enlightened. I pray that the Spirit of God would visit them at night in dreams. So I pray for my enemies. I pray for those who despitefully use me. I pray for all my leadership, whether I like them or not. But because of this, we can live peaceable lives is what, is what, what uh, Paul said. If we pray for our leadership, then we can live peaceable lives. And, and this is what we want. So we intercede. We take we take upon ourselves the burden and we say, Lord, I'm interceding for my nation and I'm asking you to have mercy on our nation. And just, just like uh, Abraham interceded for Sodom and Gomorrah because Lot, his family was there, you know, then you do that. On, and so that's what you do. You take the place of, of someone who can't pray for themselves. You, you start to, to intercede and ask God for mercy. But it's really you're doing it on behalf of people. That's what I do all the time. I'm always interceding and I'm trying to, I, I want to help people. I want people to see where they're at and where they need to go. And so we can intercede for this nation. God has plans for this nation and, and he has plans for your nation wherever you're at. But he's put you in a certain spot at a certain time for a reason. And you're, you're going to see the evidence of this. When you get to heaven, you'll see all this. But see, then it'll be too late. I'm telling you now, be mindful, be sober-minded that you are important, that you can change history. Okay, so here, here we go. Um, another, another question is, is, how do we keep our oil full to stay ready? And, and this, this is very important. The Spirit of God gives us oil. There's uh, the oil of joy. There's the anointing oil that breaks yokes. Uh, there's all kinds of, of scriptural references to oil and the anointing oil. And essentially, 
what we need in this day is whatever it takes to keep us ignited in the fire of God. So whatever that is, there's a passion, there's a, there's a joy, there's a yoke-breaking anointing, all these things, we, we have to dive into this. We have to stay in this and get lost in the love of God. Get, get in, in the middle of God's love. Get in the middle of God's word. Get in the middle of his anointing. You know, go places and do things that, that bring that anointing on. You know, uh, whether you're reading the word of God or you're sitting and listening to someone preach it, whatever it is. And I feel the anointing of God even when I'm doing things for other people. When I'm ministering to others, I feel that love and that anointing. So you, you do all those things. You, you stay in the love of God. So you pray in the spirit and you build yourself up and you stay in the love of God. And then that love will want to reach out and help others. And I'm telling you what, you're going to feel such a yoke breaking power when you start to help other people and you, and you're concerned. So that's, that's how we get full and we get ready is we just start acting out what our father's heart is for this earth, for the, the people around us. And, and we stay ready. We, we stay awake. We, we meditate all the time on the things of God. We, we ask God for revelation. Okay, the next question is this. What does Jesus want to do within our government? Okay, what he wants, as he explained it to me, is he wants just balances. So he wants justice. He wants it to be equitable. He wants it to be fair. He wants it to be righteous. So he wants righteousness to rule in this nation. So when he said that in our government, it was different than, than sometimes what we think because of what we hear and what other people are saying. But see, not everything that everybody's saying in the body of Christ is correct. But see, you have to have discernment to know. What he said was is that he wanted justice to come back to our government, which is the judicial branch, which means the judges, the attorney general, you know, all of the, of the judicial branch of the government, which has to do with our laws. And it's really interesting that all of a sudden we have problems in all these areas. We're, we're starting to see now that, that judges are corrupt. We're starting to see, we, we've always seen some of these things, but now they're, they're being exposed. Now um, people that are in different departments of our government are being exposed. Okay, so this will continue on. And this, this injustice when it comes to murdering children uh, in, the, in the womb and, and uh, the sex trafficking, all these different things w that we, we are starting to see and hear about in, in Hollywood, all these different actors and actresses, all these different things. This is, what, this is what the Lord wanted us to pray for in our government was that the, the injustice, you know, children can't defend themselves. And so all this is, is in unjust and it needs to stop. The judges need to, to rule on the favor of justice and righteousness and not on their own agenda. And, and um, Attorney General Barr, he needs our prayers to continue on exposing all this wickedness in our country. Homeland Security, all these different branches of the government that enforce uh, our police officers. You know, right away, Satan uh, was started to cause a pro problems to where people wanted to de defund the police and not allow our police officers to do their job. And, and this, has to st uh, this has to turn around too as well. This is all part of what God wants for our, for our government. So that's what Jesus wants in our government. He wants, he wants people to be able to live safe, to be protected. He, and, and our government was, was elected. Our government was formed to serve and protect us. They, they work for us. That is the absolute truth. That's what our founding fathers wanted. We pay taxes because we want protection and we want uh, the, them to serve us. And we pay them for that with our taxes. They're supposed to be protecting our country, protecting our towns, and they're supposed to be serving us. And that's, well, that's what God's plan is for this country. Um, from the five-hour visitation, what should our main prayer focus be? And the bottom line is, is, that, is that our prayer focus is we're changing history. We're, we're not allowing Satan to have his way in any way. We can completely shut him down. So our prayer focus uh, that I got from this is that the body of Christ needs to go to adulthood and get off of milk and start uh, eating meat of the word. And then the focus was is that from then we need to minister to the world 
and see the body of Christ come to its full fruition and that the harvest would come in. This is God's plan for, for us. Um, did, G, did G, Jesus share how we can be his light in the marketplace? And I've already touched on that, but, but he showed me that there were inventions that were going to be given. There'd be all these different amazing ideas that would come from heaven and that people would anticipate the needs that are going to be coming. And so he told me that he was going to show people what the needs of the people were going to be. And so people were going to start businesses to meet those needs. And so the Lord will give you that God idea. And so that's what he wanted for the marketplace. And then those of you who just serve and in whatever your job is, you go there and you just be mindful that, that you're going to witness to people. You're going to be a witness to people. And God is going to favor you at your job. And, and that's what I saw is to be a light in the marketplace was is that you do make a difference and that the covenant, the new covenant that God has made through Jesus Christ is going to be just as evident and more evident than even the old covenant, which all the nations around Israel, God says they'll fear you because of me. He said, he said they will borrow from you, but you you will not borrow from them. He said, he said, this is, this is so that they know that I'm the true God. That's what God's saying right now through us. We have the only true God. His name is Jesus and the father sent him to reveal this good news. And now it's our turn to reveal that in the marketplace. Okay. Um, next question. What is the main area or areas where Jesus wanted us to make adjustments. And this would be the lukewarmness. This would be uh, that we would make adjustments and not be lukewarm. And that also that we would start to encourage each other and build each other up. And so that's why we're starting Warrior Church and we're getting ready to launch that. And hopefully that will be in the next month. And we're going to um, have this all over the world and people will have Bible studies and meet together and love on each other and build each other up. And so that's the adjustment that we're going to make. And we're going to, we're going to uh, make it so that people are, are uh, taken care of around you, that we can meet the needs, whatever they are, wherever you are. The Lord will show you what to do to help people. And you're going to win them to the Lord. You're going to win. There's going to be many souls won to the Lord because of this, because you made the adjustment. Um, what did you see after the 11 years that Jesus talked to you about? And the answer is, I didn't. I wasn't shown. I wasn't shown that part. I was shown the next 11 years that we would run off the victory of this time of testing and prayer, where we we saw our country turn around. And so I saw these 11 years where we were able to implement all these different programs for our ministry personally. So you have to understand that Jesus was speaking to me about about personally what I'm supposed to do. And so every minister, every believer will have to have the Lord show them what they're to do. But I saw that we had this time that was given after this testing that's coming in the fall. And then after that, that, that there would be many businesses formed, that there would be many ministries launched, and that people would start to to uh, prosper in everything they did and that, that the evil would be rooted out of this, this country and that this, this uh, country would, uh, would reverse Roe versus Wade and that abortion would be illegal and then the curse that was on this nation would be removed just because uh, of that happening in one hour. Uh, you could feel it physically. If that's going to happen. That's what the Lord said was a sign. Okay, so... Uh, that that that, that uh, is what I saw. I saw 11 years of ministry, meeting the needs of people, and he said that this will happen to everybody. So me personally, he's given me about eight or nine different projects that I will be doing over these years, and um, he's given me the people that that are going to come on board with me, and we're going to do do this, and I'm going to do my part, and you're going to do your part. Uh, okay. So th uh, next question is. How should we teach and prepare our children for the days to come? And this is, this is going to make, make a, a big impact what I'm about to say because Jesus told me, he said, that all of the children in the womb right now, coming from the womb from now on, will have a prophetic voice uh, given to them immediately because of the, time, the timing that we're in right now. 
So he said that Satan tried to extinguish a whole generation of children because he anticipated that that this would be the uh, uh, the Elijah to come, the, the spirit of, of of John the Baptist. It's talked about the, the Elijah to come. This this is on the children, and they're all called to prophesy and to testify the coming of the Lord. And this great generation coming up will will do that. So I was told to to start. Um, programs to minister to children, and so we're 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 uh, ready to launch those things, and it, it'll be coming soon. But we are going to uh, minister to kids, and the Lord spent a lot of time talking about this with me. It was probably over an hour and a half of of my time was spent talking about these children's programs that we're going to start. So stay tuned. But He told me to treat them. As, as prophets and prophetesses in the womb and to train them up as, as being mighty warriors on the earth. And, and this, this will happen and we're going to be a part of that. So we're going to make it easier. We're, we're developing the curriculum and all the programs right now so that we can minister to the children. So we're going to, we're going to help the parents uh, to get their children ready for the, the powerful ministry, the prophetic ministry that is coming upon them. Okay, so you're you're going to um, have the tools at Warrior Notes to do this. And uh, it's going to be an amazing thing. You're going to see, at times you're going to think we're focusing completely on children. That's how big it's going to be. But we're, we're, uh, all, we're all going to get ministered to because the Lord wants us prepared. We, we are going to see the biggest harvest that has ever happened on the earth. It's coming very soon, just in a couple years. So, so, uh, which leads me to the last question. He said the, the, the student asked, "What did you see for 2021?" And I saw all these these uh, projects uh, being implemented. The ones that we couldn't get done this year will be implemented in 2021. And I saw it just get really bright, and I saw a cleansing happen. I saw many many people come to the Lord, but I also saw many people go to jail that got indicted. I saw. Excuse me. This 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 whole nation will be cleansed. This whole nation will be cleansed, and there will be many many who who because they did not repent, they will be caught and they will be exposed. So, I twenty twenty one will be a a huge uh, a huge separation. There will be it'll be obvious who the real church is, who the real body of Christ is. There'll be a cleansing happen, but. In the world, there'll be um, indictments. There'll be people, uh, the, the laws will favor the righteous. They will favor the people who live uprightly and, and who are accountable. And for those who are not, the laws are, are going to get tougher on people that are selfish and are destructive. And, you, you know, it's gonna, it's, you're not going to be able to get away with anything. That's what I saw, righteousness and justice coming in 2021. Okay, so that brings me to what I wanted to finish uh, tonight with that the Lord asked me. So I feel like I have I've done everything that the Lord has asked me to do tonight. And except for one thing, he wanted me to talk to you a little bit about intercession and about yielding yourself to prayer and what intercession means. And I kind of touched on this because one of the questions was that. But um, I, I want you to um, somehow... Uh, ask the Lord and, and grasp right now what the Father's saying to you because what He's saying to you is, is that He made you in His image and that you are inside, if you're born again of the Spirit of God, you've acknowledged Jesus as Lord, what happens is you have a life union with your Father right now through the born again experience. See, this is what Jesus was talking about in John 15. So I need to encourage you in these final minutes that you need to acknowledge John 15, that you are attached to the vine, that you have your life source coming from the vine, and that everything you need for life and godliness has been given to you through the divine promises. And the Apostle Peter made it clear that through the divine promises that we could be partakers of the divine nature and that we can escape the corruption that's in the world caused by lust. Okay, so either that's true or the devil is, is, is all the things that he's saying about you is true. But see, I know God is true and every man's a liar. I know the devil's a liar. So intercession is when 
you are attached to the true purpose of your father. So you have true purpose. You have the true uh, goals, desires of the father in you. And you're, you have a life source that's coming through you from the father. You are the branch. He's the vine. And you bear fruit. Okay, that fruit is fruit that lasts. Without him, you can do nothing. That's what Jesus said. Okay, so the intercession is, is that now that you are not from this world, you're not of this world. Uh, Paul said you're, you're just visiting. You're an alien. You're, you're not even, you're, you're a stranger in this, this world, just like a stranger in another country. And this, this life of, that you have down here is just visiting. So with that in mind, if you are placed in this world, but you're not of it, Paul says, Come out from among them and be ye separate. Well, see, when you do that, you're really interceding. When you say yes to God, when the world is is yelling no, and you decide to stand up for God, then you're interceding because you are not allowing the standard to be lowered. And so this is what the, the Father wanted me to talk to you in conclusion tonight, is it's very important that if you stand in the gap and you do not compromise and you refuse to let anything slip through on your watch in prayer, you will see everything that I saw going to happen in the fall. You could see all of that stop. The, the, the body of Christ can stop the whole thing. And that's why I came out with it on Sid Roth and, and all over the world was because I knew we could win. We could beat the devil. We could win at this. I saw that. And I saw that if, if I could just get it out there and say, this is what Satan has planned, and he plans on reviving the old disease as well as new diseases. He plans on uh, doing all these uh, destructive things in cities and taking over cities. And, you know, a lot of that has already started to happen. But when, when, when he showed it to me, it hadn't started yet. And this is what's interesting. Is, is that we can stand in a gap wherever we are because God placed us in a certain country, in a certain city, a certain town, so that we could stand against the power of darkness. So your intercession is, is actually evident because you're alive. You can see the results of, of you just being alive on the earth and you're not letting anything pass by on your watch. You're not going to let all this stuff happen. You're going to forbid it. And this is what Abraham did. Lord, for, for 50 righteous, you would destroy this city. And he kept whittling it down. It's the same with uh, Moses on the mountain. God wanted to destroy Israel. He wanted to kill all those millions of people because he was done with them. They were stiff-necked. They were rebellious. And Moses said, no, you can't do that, God, because then Egypt will say, that you weren't big enough to protect them, that, that you took them out in the desert and, and killed them. So Moses interceded and said, no, no, Lord, you got, you, you, you got to go with us. If, we're, if you're not going to go, then we're not going any further. And then God sent an angel, and the angel was with them. But, but uh, my, my, plan, my plan in my heart from, from our Father is this, is that we continue to intercede and we continue to see things that were going to happen. We continue to see them stopped so that our economy is not affected like it, it, it's, uh, the devil plans on doing in the fall. Uh, another, another terrible uh, uh, thing happening with, with our economy and with our finances you know, this could all be stopped. Um, supply. I saw, I saw Satan wanting to disrupt supply, even deliveries, so where you would even get, uh, your grocery stores wouldn't get their food, things like that, that uh, Satan has plans to try to stop uh, the supply so that you don't get your things you need. Uh, this could all be stopped, and, and Satan will not succeed at this if we pray and we intercede. And just, just believe with me that, that everyone will understand that they are important and that you can pray for all your leadership. Even if you don't like them, just ask that God would have mercy on them and that their eyes would be opened and that they would have an encounter with Jesus Christ. And, 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 and ask God for your country. Ask God for your state. 
ask God for your town. Ask God for all your leadership. Ask God that you, he would just have mercy on them. Intercede and stand in the gap. And I saw that, that those who chose not to repent, they would be completely removed and they would be uh, punished. But those who repented, that they would change. And then I would see, uh, my heart was that in this encounter, I saw that in the years to come, we would always look back and see that God answered our prayers and that the body of Christ stood up and was counted in this time. And that is the absolute truth that, that the Lord has asked me to share with you. And just to clarify, I everything I saw you know, all the, all the bad things that I saw could happen this fall and that were going to happen, they were pending. I saw that it, that it was conditional. It was based on if people would repent of their lukewarmness, that the body of Christ would rise up in maturity, that the fivefold ministry would get back to the proper uh, message of the good news of the gospel. I saw this whole thing go away. I saw everything start to get pushed back and I saw that we passed our test, but we have to stand up for righteousness. So continue to intercede and stand in the gap for Attorney General Barr. And, and the Lord said, I've already got the president taken care of. He said, I've already got him taken care of. He said, but I want justice coming back to this nation in the judi judicial system and the legislative system where people who are legislators are not representing the people correctly. And because of that, it's inequity, it's, it's injustice. And so this will be a great cleansing. So we can make it through this time in the fall if we pray. And, and just pray that you have law enforcement and, and proper uh, a military in the polling areas to protect the voters so that they can vote in safety. Um, just pray for all that. Pray that, that the presence of, of the police comes back, that we pray, we pray that the police officers would have favor. We pray that they would be able to do their jobs and that they would not be restricted in any way from doing what they're supposed to do. And pray for the leadership that's over each city and each state with the police because um, God, God wants order. He wants order in this country. He wants order for all of us. We want to live in safety. And so we pray that anyone who would restrict um, the, you know, the justice system, that would restrict the law enforcement system, the homeland security, any of those people that would in any way stop those uh, people from doing their jobs, that they would be removed, that, that God would find people that, that, that want to do their job correctly and allow justice and, and right balances to come to, the, to this country. And, and then we will leave, live in peace. So your freedom, your freedom is really, really at stake here. You need to pray so that we do not lose our freedom here in this nation. We're already starting to see some of this happening. And the people of this country have a voice. But see, it's the word of God. It's the living God that's with us that started this whole thing. This, this idea of nations and and countries and cities and state. This is all something that God designed. He made us all equal under him. We're all equal. All men are created equal. And that is why God sent Jesus Christ was to bring this equality that through Jesus Christ, we're all one. And it's, it's about the body of believers all over the world. So let me pray for you in conclusion and just stand in the gap and know that you just being alive and agreeing with God that you are interceding right now. So Father, I just thank you for all my students and all my partners and everybody watching all over the world. Just God bless you and, and, and may God empower you with his spirit right now as a wind. I can hear the mighty wind blowing and I sense his power so strongly. Oh Lord, you're so good. And I thank you, Father, for empowering your people right now. And I thank you, Lord, that we're pushing back the darkness by our agreement and our prayer. And I thank you, Father, that we are going to see this whole thing cleared up. And this fall will be all cleared up. And that no disruption, 
no disruption will happen. And I thank you, Father, that righteousness shall reign and your word is preeminent and your son, Jesus, Father, is, is king. And I thank you that there is no name that's higher than his. And I thank you that you, Father, have ordained this time. And I thank you, Lord God. We are all going to see a victory. We're all going to see the glory that you carry, Father. It's going to come. And I thank you, Father, for visiting their houses right now, Father. Visit them with power. Visit them in their dreams with power. I thank you that the gifts of spirit would arise in them. That all the gifts that were given to them, Father, every single individual would start to manifest those gifts to, to one another. And I thank you for the fivefold ministry, all the fivefold ministries of the church. I thank you each individual, Lord, would fulfill their calling, would, would see the power and the abilities beyond their own. And I think that, that even though their abilities, Lord, might, might be something that is notable, your abilities are greater. And I thank you that the fivefold ministry of the church will rise in power with the gifts that are given from heaven. And we will not rely on our own imagination or our own abilities, but we will minister by the fire. Father, I thank you that you took me to the future and you showed me that we win and that this is going to be a history-making generation. There will be none like us that have ever existed, Father, and I know this to be the fact that you sent me back and we're going to see your desires. We're going to see everything that you want, Father. It's going to come and it's going to be accomplished in this generation because you trust us, Father. You gave us treasures from heaven and you trust us, Father. And I'm just going to tell you, the, the Father says, I trust you. That's why I've given you this. That's why I've shown you things to come, says the Lord, is so that you can implement my righteousness in your life. That's what the Lord wants. He says, I want you to live freely and be free because he who the Son sets free is free indeed. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And you can feel that freedom right now. There is no devil in hell that can stop what God's heart is. If we stand up and we believe and we vote for our Father, we vote for righteousness, I'm telling you what, every devil in hell will have to back off. Every demon will shut up in Jesus' name. I break your power, Satan, and I command prosperity to come. I command health to come. I command all kinds of revelation to come from the Word of God. I command every evil spirit to go. Father, just pour it out on your people right now in the land of Goshen. I thank you, Father. You will have your way, Father. We love you, Father. We acknowledge you. You're a good God. You're a good God, and I thank you for it. Thank you for healing the people right now. Receive your healing. Receive your financial prosperity that you need. Receive your healing. Receive your deliverance right now. As I prayed, those devils are leaving. They're shutting up. You're going to see a difference. You can feel it in your body right now, the power of the living God. You're going to experience the power that rose Jesus from the dead right now. Overthrow, overthrow. The enemy, the enemy has been overthrown. I thank you, Father. We're going to see your salvation in this land. We're going to be in the land of the living. God bless you. This is Dr. Kevin Zeta. Thanks for joining me tonight. And just be encouraged that your prayers are working. And I wanted you to know that, that I saw things starting to clear up. And a lot of things that were going to happen are not going to happen now. But we need to continue on and keep pushing these evil spirits out so that we can clear up October and we can clear up November and we can clear up uh, December as well. And we're going to see history made. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Amen. Many people have learned to be generous givers, but more than ever, God is calling you to become a good receiver. As a special thanks to our dedicated Warrior Notes partners, Kevin would like to share this first ever partner only offer. The revelation in Dr. Kevin Zadai's newest books, Receiving from Heaven and You Can Hear God's Voice, will build on each other to position you to receive from the heavenly realm. God is a spirit and he wants to take what is from his realm and give it to you. You were made to hear God's voice. In these two books, Dr. Kevin Zadai will reveal heaven's reward system, whereby God rewards you as you diligently seek him and supplies all of your needs according to his riches. Learn how to walk in your authority as a believer 
as you partner with God to fulfill every page of your heavenly book. Order this exclusive, partner-only offer, and you will also receive Kevin's brand new Altar Fire CD. This CD will create an atmosphere of holy fire in your home, where you can encounter the heavenly sapphire. Order today, Kevin's brand new books, Receiving from Heaven, and You Can Hear God's Voice, along with his soaking CD, Altar Fire, for a donation of $35, US shipping included. To order, call 888-340-1460 with offer code 1004. Or go online to kevinsadi.com slash offer. God is not limiting you. He wants to partner with you and cause you to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit on the earth, continually receiving from heaven.